Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Michael from Zenak Snail Farm and here we talk about snail, snail farming and garden. If you like what I'm about, I hope that you subscribe and click the notification button so that YouTube will notify you whenever I release a new video to this channel. Today, I'll be giving you three things. One, the number one reason why snails die in Africa. Number two, why there isn't much can do about it as a stem farmer and three why it can potentially be a good thing for you as a stem farmer okay so Africa predominantly has two seasons the rainy season and the dry season or hamatan now during the rainy season you have lots of rain humidity is very high in the mid 80s to 90 percent but during the dry season it's very windy and the wind is very dry it basically sucks the moisture out of your body okay now snails are vegetarians they feed on vegetation and during the hammer time most of these vegetation wither away i mean if you have a greenhouse where you grow your snails you will notice the fast difference in the vegetation during the rainy season and the dry season. Despite your continued watering, it still doesn't do much difference. Now, bear in mind that snails are vegetarians and they are creatures that rely a lot on their environment in order to function. What do I mean by that? Now, snails move about to find food, to find mates, they do this by gliding on the ground, right? During the rainy season, everywhere is wet and sometimes slippery. Now, it's very easy for the snails to glide along the ground without having to spit much slime, if they spit any at all. Food is also abundant, so they don't have to worry about where they will find the next meal, right? So they thrive during the rainy season. And as a farmer, you will also notice that the price of snails in the market isn't as favorable to you because a lot of people can get snails in the forest, not just from the greenhouses. So there's a lot of supply of snails and to meet the demand or even exceed the demand, so prices fall. But during the dry season, it's an entirely different story altogether, especially for a snail farmer that is just stocking his farm. Now the reason why this is so is during the dry season, like I told you, everywhere is dry. It means that the snails are a lot more prone to drying out. Imagine if snails stick out their body from their shell in order to move and locate food. Now if you water your greenhouse frequently, as you should, right? All it does is it wets the ground. It might make it easy for the snail to move around momentarily, but it doesn't do much to change the relative humidity of the environment. Now, I'll give you an example of what I noticed in my own greenhouse. During the rainy season, right, I used to measure the relative humidity with, a, with an equipment. Now, the relative humidity during the rainy season was around mid 80s, 85, 86, 88. It went as high as 90 percent, right? But as soon as we entered dry season, I measured the the relative humidity in my greenhouse, and guess what? It was as low as 44 percent. Sometimes it was 44, 48, but it was hovering around that 44, 45 percent. Now, imagine if you're a snail that relies so much on a humid moist environment to perform that is a massive drop that is a massive massive drop in the humidity and what this does is that it means that snails aren't able to move around easily again because the ground is very dry and hot now if the ground is very dry it means they now have to secrete a lot more slime in order to glide on that slime to move along now Secreting this slime requires a lot of energy. Now, imagine a snail having to consume all this energy to secrete slime, and he or she is not even sure where they will find the next meal. 
because most of the vegetation is either away during dry season. So that's why you see a lot of snails dying and a lot of snails going into hibernation. They're going to hibernation by sealing off the entrance into their shell with a mucus plug so that they can retain the little moisture they have in there. You don't have this dry wind coming into there to, to dry them out, right? And also imagine if snails are, are sticking their head out in order to go, to risk it, to go and find food. And this dry wind keeps hitting them. They suffer the risk of drying out. And once snails dry out, they are more or less dead, right? Now, why is it that there isn't much you can do about this? You watering the greenhouse can help slightly because when snails, when you see that snails are hibernating and you water it, you know, they, they may think that the condition has changed. They will wake up from that deep sleep, from hibernation. So they, the mucus plug will fall out. They will come out, they will move about, they will eat the food that you provide. But you will notice, after a few hours, a few days, they will go back into their hibernation because they know something in them tells them that the condition hasn't really changed. They can sense the humidity. You may, I mean, the ground may be wet on your watering, but the air is still dry. The air around them is still dry. They still feel that dryness. I mean, even you as a human, when you move around during Hamasan, for those that are living in Africa, you will notice that it doesn't matter how much cream you apply on the body, you get dry, your lips dry out, your nose dry out during the dry season. So these snails feel the same thing, right? Now, in humans, you have some are stronger and some are weaker. Same thing with snails. The strong ones will be able to adapt. The strong ones are more adaptable. They will be able to survive these harsh conditions. But the weak ones die. It doesn't matter how much you help them by watering, they will still die, right? Now, how can this possibly be a good thing? And I'll tell you why. I don't know if you've heard of Darwin's law of natural selection, right? The most likely to survive are the adaptable ones. So, how this might help you as a snail farmer is that the strong ones will be the ones that are most likely to survive the harsh habitat in Africa. The weak ones will die away, unfortunately. However, these strong ones that survive, right, will now go to lay eggs and give you more hatlings to use for the next cycle of your snail farm. Now, what you will notice after a few cycles is that those snails that you now have are a lot more adaptable. They are a lot stronger and a lot adaptable, a lot more adaptable to the harsh conditions. So as time goes on, you will have fewer and fewer mortality as a result of the Hamatan condition. So that's pretty much it. The strong survive, they go on to pass on their genes to their children, you use those children to populate your next cycle of your snail farming and over time you will have less and less mortality due to the trash, the harsh, you have less and less mortality due to the harsh weather condition. Okay? So don't worry too much about it if you're seeing this mortality, especially with the dry season. It's just negative. Alright? I hope you found value in this. Please, if you did, click the notification button, the subscription button, and if you have any questions for me, please leave your questions in the comment section below. Until next time, I remain Michael from the next Month. Have a lovely day.